Can we please stand up and honor the, the reading of God's word? <clears throat> I just want to read from uh, Ephesians chapter 3, uh, starting from uh, verse 14. If you have your Bibles, and we should have our Bibles, we should bring them with us. Uh, the word of God is telling, is saying to us this morning, for this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened in the power, uh, with power through his Spirit in the inner man, so that Christ might dwell in your hearts through faith, so that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth and, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled up with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. One more verse here, uh, uh, John chapter, a couple of verses, uh, John chapter 17, as uh, Jesus' last prayer, probably it's called the priestly prayer of Jesus. Uh, just two verses, uh, John chapter 17, verse 25 and 26. O righteous Father, although the world has not known you, yet I have known you, and, and these have known that you have sent me, and I have made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love which you love me might be in them, and I in them. Just pray that the Lord will speak to, to us, and he'll help me uh, deliver the message that is put on my heart, and uh, will give us all ears to hear and hearts to receive it. It's not enough, uh, as you know, it's not enough just to hear the word of God, uh, just to, for the word to enter into our mind, we need the Holy Spirit so the word can sink in our hearts. And there in the heart, God does the work and the word can become flesh in us. So the word uh, that I want the message that I want to share this morning is getting to know the love of God. Um, and it's not, uh, I'm looking for a series. I'm looking maybe two or three messages. Uh, so today is just maybe an introduction, an appetizer, uh, but I, we, we just need to hear this message again. Um, it's, it's, it's one of the most probably important messages that maybe I, I've spoken. We spoke about the love of God before, but today we want to dwell, uh, today and in the near future, we want to dwell that we might get to know the love of God. Amen? Uh, so um, last week when I... Uh, when I shared the message about the prayer of Jesus, we wanted to, uh, to learn from Jesus, not two weeks ago, we wanted to learn from Jesus how he prayed. Uh, I, I um, looked at a verse here in 1 John chapter 3, and that verse grabbed my attention, and it stayed with me, and, and uh, it just built this message as it is. And the verse is in, in 1 John chapter 3, uh, verse um, 1 and verse 2, it says, See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us that we will be called children of God. And such we are. For this reason the world does not know us because it didn't know Him. Didn't know Him. Beloved, now we are the children of God. Amen. And if we are the children of God this morning, if you are born again this morning, if you are in the Lord this morning, if the Holy Spirit uh, beats in your, in your heart, it dwells in your heart, I want to tell you, you are loved by God. Amen. You are a child of God. Amen. Amen. So we want to restore or refresh this, this truth in our heart this morning. That maybe even today, once we leave here, we might be overflowing with the love of God in our hearts. That's uh, what a Christian is. He is deeply loved by God. He loves God, with, uh, loves God with the same kind of love. All his mind, strength, heart, soul. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Are you ready to receive the message? Might the Lord help us. So here in the scriptures that we have read this morning, uh, we know them. 
we probably memorized them. We read it many times. We see it. We, I think this is dangerous for me because <laughs> I, I'm using my hands when I preach. <laughs> um, so, and I never need water. <laughs> I don't have a problem like that. So, uh, thank you anyway for, for whoever has thought of, uh, of us uh, bringing the glass of water. Uh, but we see two prayers here. One prayer is, uh, pr uh, is from Paul and one prayer is for Jesus. And what we see here uh, in these two prayers uh, is uh, a, a prayer that, that probably we continue to need to make. We, a prayer that we need to pray all the time. If Paul prayed for the church, uh, the same thing. Jesus prayed the same thing. What did that, uh, Paul and Jesus pray? Must be very important. We see the same kind. Paul prays uh, for the church in Ephesus and for all of us and for all Christians that they might get to know the, the love of God and that they might be deeply rooted in the love of God and, and that they might get to know the height and depth, the width and breadth of this love. So that means there must be an increase. That must be, yes, sir, the church in Ephesus has known the love of God. They're all born again. People discipled by, by Paul for three years, so they grew, they got to know the love of God, but now he prays, he prays for them that they, they would increase, they would get to know more of it. They would get more to be, to be rooted in the love of God. To be, and this was maybe, I think, prophetically speaking, um, Paul has, maybe the Holy Spirit has looked into the future uh, and, uh, um, and maybe was a warning to them that in the, we know what happens in the book of uh, uh, Revelation that the church of Ephesus has left this love, has left this love. And that's, uh, that's why Paul was stressing here that I want you to grow in the love of God. I want you to increase in the love of God. I want you to be deeply rooted in it. And I want you to get to know the size of it, the height of it, the width of it, the depth of it. And, and, uh, and, and this is very important. And also Jesus, just before he died, you know, he prays to the Father, that long prayer in John 17. He said the same thing. I want that love that we have to be in you. And this, this is what, why this is, must be important. And this is why I think we must meditate. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will, will, will freshly renew or, uh, or reveal to us the love of God that we might uh, desire it, that we might go after it. Amen? So the, the, the first thing in, in, my, in, in the introduction, I, I want to look at two things this morning. Uh, why do we need to get to know the love of God? Why do we need to grow in the love of God? We cannot miss it. We cannot miss this. The Bible says that as Christians, if we don't know the love of God, we are just a clinging symbol. We can do everything and we'll see. We can do great things, great things for Christ. And we just, there's nothing about us if we miss this. So I speak to you in weakness. I speak with you, uh, uh, to you this morning as somebody who is in need to, 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 to get to know the love of God more. I am, we are in the same boat. I'm not better than you as it is. And, and, and I pray that God will give us grace that we might see that the Holy Spirit might reveal to us the love of God. Amen this morning. And, and, and to value it with our hearts above all things to value this love of God, because Paul says love never fails. Everything may fail, but love never fails. So I don't want to be a, a, a clinging symbol. Many times I find myself to be a clinging symbol. I, I, I spoke to, to JP the other day. I said, look, there is a, there is a, a problem you know, with us preachers. You know, Paul says that you, know, you can speak in tongues, but no love, you're nothing. And we can prophesy the same thing. We can preach good messages. We know the language. We know how to preach. Well, you know, same, the same way like the, 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 the people who speak in tongues. They received tongues once many years ago. And they received the language. But you know, after so many years, something has disappeared. There's no love behind it. Just a clinging symbol. So we preachers also can be clinging symbols so easily. Yes. So I just, that's why we, we need you to pray for us that that we might not be comfortable in Zion, that we might not just get used to preaching. I remember when I started preaching, you know, I needed God badly. I didn't know how to preach. I, my English was terrible. I, I was just, I was so stressed. I was sweating when I, I and, and I went in the evenings, you know, and I 
prayed for half an hour, one hour before, you know, after everybody went to sleep. I just prayed, God help me, God help me, God help me. Oh, but after a while, after getting used to preaching and, and so on, you know, I don't pray as much, you know. And this is the, the, where the danger is because it's so easy to become a clinging symbol. So easy. So why I want to, to, to look at about six maybe six reasons or six verses, mainly, of why I need to pursue the love of God, why I need to get the love of God, why I need to grow in the love of God, why the church needs to grow in knowing the love of God. Six, one, please make a list. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't have mind for brother, some brother here to come and make the list so we can have also a visual of the list. And at least sometime, you know, we can hear, but if we have a visual a list, then we can remember easier. But that's, that's okay. Um, uh, we haven't done it. The first reason is, the first reason, and we shall go to John chapter 15, one verse, two verses there. We're going to look, the first reason to get to know the love of God, please, it is because it is commanded by God. It's not Sam. It's not any other brother. It's not any other preacher who, 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 who is exhort, exhorts us or encourages us to, to get to know the love of God, to, to grow into love. No. Jesus is commanding. God is commanding us to get to know the love of God. Amen. Please come with me. Just one verse here. John chapter, uh, <clears throat> John chapter 15, I think. I want to read it to you. I... I I sort of memorize all these verses, but I just want to read them. Uh, it says in uh, chapter 15, John 15, verse 9. I want to just read that first and then one more verse. Uh, just as the Father, he says, just as the Father, Jesus, verse 9. Just as the Father has loved me, I also loved you. Just as the Father loved me, I also loved you. And the commandment comes here. Abide in my love. It's a commandment. Just as, as the Father loved me, I loved you with the same love, and now the commandment, abide in my love. Uh, and in chapter 13, he, has, he says, he, he, verse 34, he says, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. It's a commandment that we love one another, not as we uh, love our wives or not as we love our friends and not as we love our children but it, we, it is commanded to us that we love one another with the same kind of love that, that Jesus loved his disciples and this, as I said this, this the, the many times the, the love that we have for, 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 for our spouses, for our children for friends and so on the, the love that we have is, it's, an, uh, it's, it's a love that that uh, uh, the, the origins of this love is earthly. It's, it's in us. But Jesus commands us that we are to love each other with, with a love that is not earthly in origins. It's, it's divine. It comes from heaven. It's the God of love. He says, because Jesus loved us with that kind of love. So we are commanded to, to get to know this love, to partake of this love, to grow in this love, not in our own love, Oh, in our flesh and our nature, we can love. But is that the kind of love that stands before God? That kind of love is, is going to burn out. When God is going to test our work and He's going to test what we've done for Him, that's wood and high. It's going to burn up. Everything, that's gonna, you know, that everything that is going to stand before God is going to be that that He has given us. And the Bible says that this love, in Romans chapter 5, it says, this love is brought in our, in our hearts. Our hearts are flooded what, with, with the love of God. And it's flooded, how? Abroad. In other words, God is looking. The Holy Spirit is looking to find empty hearts, hungry hearts, where He can fill us, uh, fill them with His love. Uh, as I said, a, a heavenly love, a divine love, a much greater and, and, and much holier as it is and uncorrupted than our own loves that are in our hearts. So please keep this in mind. I want to keep it short because we're also going to have a, a meal afterwards. Keep in mind, reason number one 
for us to get to know the love of God is, uh, is because he commanded us. It's not something that I suggest. It's not something that uh, just a preacher decided to preach. No. It's commanded by God. And it's the will of God. Amen. Amen. Let your will be done. The will of God if for us is to, so we can have our hearts filled with his love. And that when we pray, that will be done. And when we pray for the Holy Spirit, why do we pray? Just to speak in tongues? Praise God for that. For all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But the Bible says in Romans chapter 5 that the Holy Spirit comes to bring about His love in our hearts. Amen. Amen. That's another reason. No, many, no, not many people speak about this, but this is, this is true about the Holy Spirit. Whenever He comes, He brings the love from heaven into our hearts. And we need to take this on board. We need to, to get to know this love of God because God commands us. Number two. <clears throat> Amen. Number two is um, <clears throat> John chapter 13. Let's go there. Number two is uh, the love of God. The reason, the number two reason for us to get to, to, to know the love of God is because it is the hallmark. I looked for another word, uh, might be an emblem, might be an, uh, I don't know, in, identity card, but hallmark, I think, is the best, the hallmark of Christianity. Amen? Please come with me in John chapter 13, uh, verse 34. We read here before, we read uh, 34, now we read 35. By this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. By this... You know, people will know that you are my disciple. This is how people will identify the disciples of Jesus. And I want to tell you, it is not just people who, identi who will identify us. It, it, it's not just the people who look for this hallmark to see in us. It is God also identifies the disciples of Jesus if they love one another. Satan will see that. Oh, look at these this, this brethren in this church. They love one another. He knows. He knows that this hallmark. Every, all the universe, they look at the church, you know, and, and, and see, you know, people loving each other. They say, man, these are the disciples of Jesus. And that's what the world needs to see. Oh, we say, well, we have a message. Yes, praise God for the message. Uh, what happens if we preach the message? And uh, people come in, in, in the church and they, people are called toward each other. They, they, they don't love each other. Oh, but I remember when we, we have started, you know, when we started the church, you know, when we had visitors and we went out, you know, much more. Um, we did, you know, picnics together and all that. And, and they, they told us, man, there's something different here. There's this love in your midst. And we want to keep it that way. And not just keep it that way, we want to grow into it. And, and it is our duty to grow into it because it's the hallmark of Christianity. Uh, the, it, the Bible doesn't say here, Jesus doesn't say, oh, the people will know that you are my disciples if you do signs and miracles. Never. Or, or if you speak in tongues, or if you, if you do this, that, or the other. No. The people will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And my brothers and sisters, if you don't have that love in your heart for your brethren, please, you don't stand before me this morning. Everything before God is open. He knows our minds, He knows our hearts, he, he knows us better than we know ourselves. Repent this morning. Repent, let off, let go of grudges, let go of, of bitterness in your heart towards any brother, if there is this case in, in, in your heart. Let go. Last night, last night, I just want to confess. That's why probably I stand in, in just a, in weakness this morning here. Last night, we had a fight at home, me and my wife. I'm not as good an elder, as a holy an elder, as you think I am. I need the grace of God. And I went before the, the Lord after fighting and arguing. And um, I stood before the Lord and I just wanted to meditate on what happened. And, and the Holy Spirit says, you, you many times say in the church that you don't fight with flesh and blood. Why you fight with flesh and blood? Why? And I just thought, Lord, Forgive me for doing that. Forgive me. I just don't want to fight with flesh and blood. So I went and I, I asked forgiveness and we, we reconciled together so we can love each other again. 
You know, there's just things like that we, we, that should be part of the church life. Amen. Should be part of not just keeping grudges for months, for years. Amen. You know, just quickly just confess your sin and, and confess to your thoughts. Don't, don't allow that because it becomes a stronghold. And that's how the unity and love in the church disappears. We've done that. We know. We've been in churches like that. So I just pray. It's our duty. Our duty to pursue this love, to, to grow in that love that, so we can love our, the love of God, that we, we can grow in this, this love in the church because this is the hallmark of Christianity. I need to move on, but this is just, this is so important. I pray that the Holy Spirit will convict us this morning because, yeah, first is, is the command, but then this is, number two is, is the hallmark of Christianity. This is how God identifies us. This is how Satan identifies us. This is how people identifies us. This is, you know, everybody identifies us. It's just so important. Number three, number it says here, so 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14, the love of God is the strongest if I could say, strongest um, motivator. Stronger, the strongest motivator to a life of devotion to Jesus. Yeah? Amen. That's why it's important. Let's see what says. He says, for the love of God <clears throat> controls us. Having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. The love of God controls us. The love of God, in another translation, says, compel us. Is the love of God compelling you? Is this the, 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 the driving force in, in, in our lives to, to, to wake up in the morning or, or to stay late at night or to wake up during the night and to, to spend time with the Lord, to, 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 to do a, a devotional time with the Lord, to, to, to just be with Him. You remember when, when we fell in love with our spouses when we were young, we would run to the meetings and we would just spend time with each other um, and, and there was just no time. Time was irrelevant there, isn't it? There was... There was talking about this uh, revival in Ashbury, how the meetings have gone non-stop, die and night, and people would die, just stay there for six, seven hours uh, without leaving the, 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 the meeting place. Why? Because what kept that, you know, people in for such a long time without break? You know, what? Oh, there was a compelling, there was a controlling there. They were controlled by the love of God. They love God. And they, they wanted to, to spend time there. They wanted to spend time with the Lord. They wanted they, they, to, to spend time in His presence, you know, to, to worship Him, to sing praises to Him. Ah, oh, well, that's, that's okay in the, in the meeting. But my question is, is there a compelling love in, in our hearts to every day to do some devotional life with God, together with Him, at the feet of Jesus, like Mary did? sitting at the feet of Jesus, talking to Him, singing praises to Him. No, just, just devotion. Or not just devotion. It's not just the strongest motivator just for devotion. Time, just for devotions. No, just for reading the Word, just for prayer. That's not the, only that, but the strongest motivation for, to live for Him. You now he loved us. Why? So we now, and he died for us. The Bible says here that we might now live for him who died for us. That's that's the compelling here. That's the the controlling aspect. Now we cannot live just for ourselves anymore, but just live for him. We do family for him. We do go to jobs for him. Uh, our money are not ours. Our time is not ours. We 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 just live for him. We. We, we serve in the church for Him. We, we serve outside the church for Him. We are His hands, His feet, His mouthpiece. We, we just live for Him. Directed by the Holy Spirit, He initiates, He energizes, He, he empowers us so that, that He might be glorified. But he, he, the love of God is sending people, even as I said Wednesday, 
you know, people just leave the country, leave the, this place, and they just go to, our family went to Philippines, another one is going to Burma, uh, to Thailand, and you know, just who is pushing, another goes to Africa, and this is, uh, not everybody goes, not, not everybody has to go out, but you go out to your job, and you go out in, you know, outside and in the shopping center, and you, you live for him. You are at his, you are available for him. Amen. And it just changes us. Why, why can we do that? This is because it is the love of God behind it. It energizes, it, 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 it sort of compels and controls us. We cannot but do that because it, love controls. Yeah. So this, this is, so first is a, is a command. Second is the hallmark of Christianity. But that is the, the third one is the strongest, I say the strongest motivator that controls us in our Christian life. Anything that we do is worthless if we don't have love for God. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will, will bring about that and, you know, this love in your heart so I don't have to, to maybe just tell people, oh, come in time. You know, come at 10 o'clock. I tell you what, if the love of God is in your hearts, we'll be here at 9 o'clock. There's people always I heard Brother Basil or somebody else, I think Brother Basil was saying that in the church uh, there in Romania there was a guy who, who came to the Lord and after two or three years he, he, when he came to the Lord was first to come to the meetings and first to leave and he would, after two or three years he was still first and he was so full of joy and he, says, he said, what shall we preach to, what, what shall we teach this guy? Why? Because the the love of God is, he was just drawn to the Lord and to his courts and, to, and, and, and so on, and to his presence. Amen. When the love of God controls somebody, you do crazy stuff. You can become, says somebody, you know, Keith Green, you can become bananas for Jesus, crazy for him. Yeah, you can do some crazy stuff. Oh, but this is, this is what I think we lost, the controlling power of the love of God from us. And that's why we need... To, to get to know this love. We need to grow into it. We need to, 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 to be rooted deeper in it so we can regain that. And when you pray for the Holy Spirit to come, so baptize, to, to baptize you, to fill you, don't just pray for tongues. They pray, Lord, I want my, my, my heart flooded with, with the love of God, with your love. Amen? Do you want that? Are you hungry for that? Yes. Sonia, only you. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Um, Galatians chapter 5 verse 6 Galatians chapter 5 verse 6 the next one Galatians chapter 5 verse 6 the love of God is the activator the one that activates our faith. Amen. Amen. Verse 6, For in Christ Jesus, neither, listen to this, in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. It doesn't, it, it's, it's zero, no value. That's what it means. It says, that's nothing. But, it says, faith working through love. That's what counts. Circumcision, non-circumcision, eating pork, not eating pork, eating healthy, you know, all these things, you know, keeping diets holy, doesn't mean anything, zero, but faith working through love. You see, we, we, we were, and we, we brother, brother J.P. was teaching in the church a lot about faith, and, and I believe there's still more room to teach about faith, but... <clears throat> And, and we've inherited this, this idea, and I just wanted to, to uh, bring to your attention again. We, we've, re, we've gained this along the years in Christendom, um, this idea that faith is something in our mind, or faith is or, or, or something in our heart, and we've forgotten that, that faith without works is, is dead. Uh, that faith is your life, faith is our walk, faith is our works, 
It's, it's united. It's, you, cannot, you cannot say that you, oh, yeah, I'm, I have the right doctrines in my mind and I'm a Baptist, I'm a Pentecostal, I believe that or the other. It doesn't matter what you believe. Is there faith that is working through love? Is this, this faith, what you believe in your mind, is, is it working at all? And in many cases, faith is not working. It's, it's, it's a terrible kind of faith, a dead faith. And it produces nothing. Just pew warmers in the church. People just come to church. But you see, the, the, the only thing that should sort of motivate or, or um, act, activate our, our, our faith, our, the doctrines that we've gathered in our mind, is love. It makes our faith grow legs, if I can put it that way. It, it go the distance. You, you, you just do stuff because it just, the love is behind it. God, forgive us for, for, for this kind of dead faith that doesn't work. And forgive us, Lord, for, for the dead kind of faith that works, but for different wrong reasons, not because of love. You know, many people work for, because they want to be important in Christendom. They want to have a name in Christendom. There's they, they self-promotion there. They... they, they, they they want to build the, their own kingdom. There is a lot of people, reasons why people work and they just build Babylon and confusion. But the only reason that should, should drive us is, is the love of God. It, it activates our faith, makes our faith real before God. Are you hungry for, for this kind of love that makes your faith real? Amen. One more or two more. Um, <clears throat> one John chapter... 4, verse 18. 1, Jor, uh, I, 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 you know that verse. Uh, what is it saying there? 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, I think, yeah? It um, says, love casts out fear. The love of God, the true love of God, is casting out, casting out fear from our heart. Unhealthy fear. It's an antidote, if I can put it this way, an antidote for fear. Now, we, we, we know there's, in these last days that fear is increasing. People are just fearing everything. Even in the church, we have people who, who have fear in their hearts. Even in, in the church, there is, because of fear, there is anxiety, there is um, depression, there is worries. And, and, but this, the love of God is, is an antidote to fear. You cannot fear. You cannot have this unhealthy fear in your heart if you, if you love. Because those two cannot. There is a healthy fear. The fear of God. Paul says that knowing the fear of God, we compel or we preach. Uh, you know, and we exhort everybody to be reconciled with God in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So knowing the fear of God. Yeah, we, we need to know that. It's a healthy fear of God. But to dread God, to dread God, to run away from God, you, 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 like, like Adam and Eve in the garden, to, 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 because you fear Him, to fear hell, to, to, to dread, to, to, to fear you know, what's going to happen tomorrow. To fear for your health, the fear that you accidents, there's just so many, so many kinds of fears. People are gripped by fears in these last days. And it's gonna grow worse because of the news that are 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 coming our way every day. And they, they are meant to instill fear because Satan can control people who fear. You know that, don't you? Just be fearful of tomorrow. You know what can set you free from, from the fear of tomorrow? Fear that you lose everything. You know, people are listening to so many conspiracies on the internet these days. And, and uh, <clears throat> we know some of them are true. But if you dwell on them, we know the conspiracy here. For the whole Bible, we can see that Satan conspires against the kingdom of God. It's a, it's a cons from right from the beginning. And Satan doesn't like the people of God, so he conspires against them. It's, it's right there from the beginning. But if you, if you just dwell on that, the fear of tomorrow, the fear that I might lose my house, the fear that I might, I might go hungry, and the fear that I might, I might 
go through suffering and, and, and lose my house and all that. The love of God can set you free from that. And you can come to a place where you know that you know that God loves you and whether you lose everything, <laughs> praise God, you lost nothing. Even in sickness, you, you, you get sick and you, you lie in your bed and you, you're ready to die, but you are loved by God. You know why? You, you know why? You, you know because the Spirit of God is, is crying in your hearts, Abba, Father. You know, and everything works together for our good. If God decides us to, to, to give us a <clears throat> time on earth, let's praise God. If He wants to take us away, praise God. He knows our eternal good. We spoke the other day about uh, Ezekiel, you know, uh, who wanted to live a bit more. God gave him a, another 15 years. What happened in those 15 years? Was it for his own good? Now we should rest in the love of God. He knows our best. Whether, whether I said, whether we lose it all or whether, uh, you know, whether, whether we get sick or whether we go hungry, can we just be rooted in the love of God and, 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 and not allow fear to come in? Fear will destroy you, brother. Fear will destroy you. If fear drives your, your, your if the motivation in, in, you know, that, you, that drives you, you know how many, how many preppers are, you know, it's an industry in America now, in, 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 in the world. People are prepping so they don't go hungry, so they don't lose everything. That's, you're driven by fear. I pray that the Lord will, will just, just flood our hearts and cast out all this fear in our hearts. Amen? Amen. Uh, one more thing. One more thing. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Make this list public. Write it in your heart. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We know that already. It's a beautiful, um, beautiful scripture here. Um, this love of God gives value to our works. Not just value, eternal value. When we work, when you do stuff, when you, when you serve, when you in the church, outside the church, when you have a ministry in the church, outside the church, when you do stuff, love of God will give eternal value to what, you, to what you're doing for the Lord. Listen to this. If I speak it with tongues, I've already mentioned this a bit. If I speak with the tongues of men and, and, and of angels and, and, don't, and do not have love, I have become a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. Now, can I tell you, is it possible to, to speak in tongues? Um, and the tongues of angels, is it possible to speak and have no love? Yes, yes that's why it's written here. It is possible. But what happens if I speak in tongues and I pray in tongues and I praise God in tongues? What happens if, if the love of God is there in my heart? Is this, what happens? Is God, is God, is God going to forget my ministry and my, sir, my, my prayers? Is it going to forget? No, this is where value comes in before God. To my speaking tongues here, it says... Is, 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 is real before God. Why? Because there's love. It's rooted in love. It's embedded in love. And gives value to my speaking in tongues and my praying in tongues and my praising God in tongues. What about here? It says, what uh, if I have the gift of, of prophecy and know all the mysteries and all knowledge and if I have all faith as to re move, remove mountains but I do not love nothing. Is it possible to be a, the best preacher, the best prophet? Is it, is, is, it pro is it possible for a man to come here and preach in such a way to impress people but have no love? I know it's possible. We have so many examples. People who lived in adultery, even homosexuality. We know examples. Big men of God, but they are living in such sin. It's possible. You, 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 you have the noise. You have the, the words. You, 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 you have the, the shell, but the inside the, the reality is not there. It's possible to, to have faith. It says even faith to do miracles, to remove mountains. 
but there's no love behind it. It's, it's just emptiness. She says, it's nothing. You're, you're, you're nothing. He says, and, and then if I, have, if, I, if I give all my possessions, he says, all my possessions, is it, you know, to, to the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, this is extreme. This is extreme. People, people can die for, for something. This, this is how people, God made us. Maybe God made us in his image because God died for us. And we can die. Well, I, I know in my country at the beginning when communism came in, there was young people who were ready to die for this ideology. And they gave their lives. Muslims can die for their faith. Hindus can die for their faith. They, they, we are made like that. To, to, to live for something that is above us. Greater than us. So we can come and we can, as Christians, we also can give all that we have to the poor and we can also give our body to be burned. But he says, if there's no life, it love, the love of God there behind it, it's, it's nothing, it's zero. So the love of God here is, first of all, love, you know, lastly, the love of God gives value, eternal value to what we do for the Lord whether inside the church, ministry inside the church, or something that we do outside, whether we give to the poor, whether we preach the gospel, whether we serve uh, others, or whatever you do, uh, the love of God is a must if, it, if you want your deeds to have eternal value. Amen? Amen. I just want in closing, I want to just give me another five, ten minutes in, clo uh, in, in closing. How? How we, uh, if we uh, how we grow in the love of God? Well, what does it mean to, to, to get to know the love of God? We, we looked at six reasons why we need to, why is it important? Why Jesus, why, why Paul prayed uh, for, for, for the disciples? And I believe that our high priest in heaven still prays that we might have his love in, in our hearts. Yeah? Is it, it's important to God. It's important to us. You know, the Bible says, for example, when, 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 um, uh, the, when I first mentioned that it's a command, there's a many commands in the Bible about the love of God. It says in, uh, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2, it says, walk in the love of God. It's a command. Jude one twenty one. it says, keep yourself in the love of God. Amen. Abide in the love of God. This is, this is important to, to, to the Lord. Amen. So, how do we keep ourselves? How, how, do, we, how do we grow? How do we get to know this? Uh, so, I just want to, just two things here. In, uh, in the scripture that we read from uh, Ephesians chapter 3, it says, <clears throat> when, when Paul prays, he says, so, so that Christ might dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, might be able to com comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, and the height, and the depth, and to know the love of Christ. And I, I, I just want to look shortly at this, uh, this word, comprehend, or understand, with your mind. That you, that you, 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 you come to a place where, where the Holy Spirit bring some revelation in, into your mind about this love of God, the, the depth, the height of it, the, 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 the width of it, and, and so on. The Holy Spirit is, it can bring this, needs to bring this revelation. Last week I said that the Holy Spirit brings, it needs to bring us the revelation that God is our Father. Without the revelation, it, it's, it's just a mental ascent, just a mental, oh yeah, I believe that, but, but if the Holy Spirit doesn't come and, and reveal that as it did to, to Peter, you know, Peter recognized who Jesus was at, the, at Caesarea Philippi. He said, he received a revelation, flesh and blood, Jesus says, did not reveal this to you. That's why the Holy Spirit is, is, is a revelator. He, he reveals, he reveals, brings that, that sin before us that we might have a deeper comprehension or understanding about the love of God. So that, that is the first thing. And, and, and my prayer is, 
the Lord, uh, you know, Holy Spirit come and, and reveal, bring this, about this revelation about the love of God in, in our hearts. Without the Holy Spirit, you, you cannot grow into this. If, if he doesn't bring this revelation, if he doesn't grip and touch your, your heart as it is, you cannot have this, this revelation. And without revelation, there is no transformation, there is no change. You know that. So we need this revelation. Holy Spirit, come reveal to, to everybody in this church this morning. All our brothers and sisters, this, bring about this revelation that we might comprehend, that we might see, behold what, what kind of love God has shown us. Behold, look, see. 1 John chapter 3. Behold, see that we might get to know it. And the Holy Spirit can do that this morning for you if you pursue. There's another command. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, pursue love. It's a command. Pursue love. You've you got to go after it. And when, when the Holy Spirit sees a, a, a heart that is hungry and thirsty, that is pursuing this above all things, you know what? The, God is love. And when you say you pursue love, you pursue God. When the love of God is in your heart, God is in your heart. Amen? And that's why God, love never fails. Keep yourself in the love of God, we said before. Yeah? Keep yourself in the love of God. In the midst of, when Jude writes, you had those false teachers and people who are you know, going astray from their faith and exhorting them to, to strive together for the faith once given uh, to, to all the saints. It says in the midst of that, it says, keep yourself in the love of God. That's security there. Uh, you know, you, you, if you have the love of God in your heart, you, you cannot take off with wrong teachings and wrong prophets and all that. Stay in the love of God. So we need this revelation of the love of God. I pray to God and I pray that even in our prayer meetings we, we, might, we might pursue it in our prayer meetings. We might pursue it when we are spending time at home on our knees in our secret place. Lord, Lord, I, I, I want to partake. I, I, I want to be rooted in your love. I want to grow. I want to get it. I want more of it. Number two, this is also very important, um, <clears throat> what it means to, to grow or to get to know the love of God. It says in verse 19, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge. Yeah, there is knowledge about the love of God. You get to know about it. Even if the Holy Spirit reveals it to you, that's knowledge. It's something that you know deep in your heart. But it says, you you. you you get to know the love of God which surpasses knowledge. It's more than knowledge. And the word there, to know, I looked at the interlinear Bible. It, we are so blessed these days. I remember when I started uh, studying the Bible, you know, when I was, I don't know, 30 years ago, I went to the bookshop and I just bought a, a big inter, interlinear, it was about that thick interlinear Bible, a concordance, another big one, I just went through this and I had, now it's a, just a touch of the button here and we can just check all, all the meanings and it's, it's, it's just so quick, it's such a big blessing, you know. Uh, but I look at the word in, 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 in Greek uh, to know that it's used here. The, the, the word is ginosko. Am I, am I saying it right, brother? Ginosko. I, I pray that you ginosko the love of God. This kind of love... <laughs> In, in, in Romanian, we, we say kunosk. <laughs> but ginosko, the love of God, a, a, a love that, that surpasses understanding, that is more than, than, than uh, knowledge. And what does it ginosko mean? It means that the same verb that Mary, in some of the translations, so when the angels spoke with Mary, Virgin Mary, she says, how, you know, you, you're going to have a child and all that from the Holy Spirit, you, you know what happened. And, and he says, how, how, can, how, how can that be? Because I, I don't know any man. I don't know. Uh, I don't kinosko any man. And he talks about the, an intimate uh, relationship there, an Indian knowledge. It's not just uh, uh, an, in, an intimate relationship. It's not just knowledge. It's, it's, it's something that is deeper than knowledge, greater than knowledge, surpasses knowledge. It's an experience. Uh, it's a Simon uh, in, in the book of uh, Genesis. Um, it, it says that Adam knew his wife. Uh, Ad, Adam Ginosko in Greek. 
Ginosko, his wife, again, it's a deeper meaning and experience. It's not just knowledge. You just don't know your wife. You know, you, you, you talk to her, you know things about her or your husband. And I say, I, I know, I know my own. But this verb, it, it talks about more than just knowing about. You know, it talks about having a, that deeper relationship where you, you know your wife, you, you, you knew her, you know her or your husband. And you ginosko your wife, right? So this is you ginosko, the love of God, which is, surpasses knowledge. So how do I, how do I love, how do I know, how do I experience the love of God? Are you satisfied with just knowing about the love of God? Just comprehending about it? Even if it's revealed by the Holy Spirit, you have all these truths, I have all these truths here. Yeah. Are you satisfied or you want to experience that? To, to experience in practical life where you know that, that, that God loves, loves you. You know that the Holy Spirit cries, Abba, Father. You know, where, where you know that you love God and when you pray, He answers. When you ask from, you know, all, all the good gifts that he, you know, the Father has, you know, He gives you. You, you know that he, you are at peace because He works in all things for your good. Oh, praise God, that's another different level of love, isn't it? You know that God loves you. Why? Not just because you know in your mind or heart, but because you have experienced that kind of love. And I, this is what I just want, I, I want for us this morning. To have that kind of love. I want to close it here. We'll continue next time.